Good morning fellow Plexers. Today's video is for Greg, a member of the Plex Media Server Support Group, who was asking about moving his media to a Synology NAS for the first time and whether he should have folders for each of his movies. And I covered that in the group with a lot of screenshots showing my preferred setup. But that setup is from the point of view of scalability um, so that nothing with your current server has to change as it grows over time and you may add more libraries. So I shared a lot of graphics with him um, where I set up a network shared folder for my media and then I have five library sort folders, one for movie libraries, TV show libraries, photo libraries, other video libraries and music libraries. And inside those folders are the actual Plex Media folders that you point your libraries at. So if you were only going to have a kids TV show library and a regular TV show library, there'd be two library folders in that library sort folder. If you're going to do the same in your movie library, but maybe have a stand-up library on the side or a documentary library on the side, you'd have those three subfolders in the movie library sort folder. Music, I can't really make a case for having more than one music library, um, but you know, you still follow the same theme just in case down the road you wanted to add a test music library for some reason. Maybe you wanted to have a small collection that were all um, FLAC files versus a regular um, MP3. At least that opportunity is open. Well, our new moderator, Ben, who's fabulous, suggested that you really might not need multiple libraries because you can just sort things with collections. That's a great answer and very workable for a smaller collection. Unfortunately, that's not scalable. So if you think your library might grow, I think it's better to split things up. So I'm going to go into the Plex HTPC client app with my regular Plex server. And I'm just in my movie library. And I'm into the collection tab. Um, and there's a neat feature with collections. If you name them the same, they will cross-reference between libraries. So I have a manual collection called Al's Favorites. I've got 170 movies added to that collection. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see it cross-references with the same name collection in my documentary movie library. So it kind of ties things together. So if I move to this library now, as you scale up, as you add more media, and if you have remote users who are your friends and family, you're going to have family members or friends who will never watch a documentary library in their life. Well, why, why throw that content into your main movie library, especially if it's large? If someone wants to see that content, it's harder to search for. And if you've got hundreds and hundreds of collections in a large movie library, they're not going to see those specific documentary collection libraries too easy. It's really better just to have a separate library for that content. So here's my main movie library. I have about 100 concerts in a separate concert library. Of all my family and friends, I've only had one person watch concerts. No one else has to even have this library pinned. They can, they can unpin it and not be bothered by it. The same with a documentary library. I have a couple friends and family members who love this type of content, and they can have it pinned and they can move it up near the top if they want to. Um, I also have a sizable um, theatrical collection. And again, a few users love this content and they can pin it. Those who will never watch it can unpin it. And, and by having it in a separate library, it doesn't clog up my main movie library. So the, the um, cross-reference collections 
are a great way to take that content that's split apart and to then bring it back together. So I showed you the Al's favorite from my movie library. Now if I go into the documentary collection, you'll see at the bottom the titles from the collection in my main movie library cross-reference. Don't ask me how I got this content, that's not part of this discussion, but I have this collection of documentaries and it cross-references with the same name collection in my main movie library, in my kids movie library, and in my theatrical library. And these are smart collections. I've just become aware that smart collections will now cross-reference like manual collections. And I don't know why my TV show collection for this grouping isn't included yet, but I may have renamed it improperly. Maybe I've got a uh, space between TV and Plus. But that's a new thing. So smart collections are now cross-referencing. I'll have to verify if they also cross-reference with a plain collection. But this is a great way to tie contact, uh, content back together. I have a BLM collection of documentaries, and you'll see it cross-references with the same name collection in my movie library, um, in my theatrical collection library, and my TV show library. It's a great feature. So I strongly suggest for scalability to split apart unlike content, because you can always um, draw that content back together on similar topics. What else might I have in here? Focus feature. I love focus feature movies. So here are my focus feature documentaries, and then it ties back into the main movie library. So if someone finds this collection in my main movie library, they may have no idea that there's also documentaries put out as focus features, and at the bottom of the collection in the main movie library, they'll see these titles. So, scalability is the key. Um, once you know, it's like you can't unknow. You set yourself up for success by allowing your Plex to easily grow without having to backtrack to fix things you wish you knew at the beginning. So again, Ben's advice is great for a small server that's going to stay a small server. But as a server ramps up with content wise and you add more titles, you may want to split apart totally unlike items. And that's where my folder structure comes in. Um, it's all nested. You open up your main network share or your main media folder on a JOBD hard drive. And then inside it, you have a library sort folder for each type of Plex library. And inside those individual library sort folders, you then have one, two, or three, or four actual movie libraries or a couple TV show libraries. Um, and then inside each of those individual library folders, you place your Plex Media folders properly named to both the, the movie naming guide and the TV series naming guide. And then inside that are your proper season folders for TV shows and then your episodes. It really is scalable this way. And I know I'm trying to sell this to probably some people who might never grow a sizable library but just don't cut that opportunity off. Leave it open, especially if you're setting things up fresh. All right, happy plexing and thanks for watching.